It's all yours, Denise. Take it oh, away. Right. Lately, would you read? Well, you're going to open the select board meeting and then. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll open it. The and then I'll meeting. read the hoo has. Yeah. yeah. Is that all right, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. No, I want to open it. Okay. <laughs> no fighting. <laughs> Someone open the meeting. Too many yeah. meetings today. <laughs> so we're open at 6 32. Okay. All right. And, and what are you going to call the CCI open now? I will. Call on the CCI meeting open at 6 33. Got it. And okay. I will read the hoo ha. Yeah. <clears throat> is who has associated with our former governor. Um, meetings normally held municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access where required public participation provided in accordance with chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, master General laws, chapter 30A, section 20 until March 31st, 2023. The link for the Zoom can be found on the agenda that is posted at town hall and on the website. Thank you, Lily. Wonderful as usual. All right, meeting guidelines, please speak one at a time, follow Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive, and please be recognized by the chair or I'll have to holler at you. Okay, all right, <laughs> okay. Roll call, um, Jim Cambius. Present. You're here. Julie will be arriving at some point, Lily. Present. Here, Tim. Here. Kate. Here. You're here. Uh, Andrea will be arriving later. I'm here. Trevor's coming later. No, Dan Trevor's here. here. Oh. Trevor's already here. Oh. Trevor's I, I, um, after, after I said he was coming later, he popped on. <laughs> Partially. I'm halfway here. Okay. Halfway Trevor. Okay. Carolyn, you're here. <laughs> yes. John's here. Emma is here. MA is here. The twins, MA and Alan. Yeah. Okay. He's, a, he's a guest. Okay, guest. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? Oh, yeah, I did. Ah! I, <laughs> I said Annalie. Oh, here. <laughs> you sure you're here? Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from December 12th? And if so, are there any corrections, additions? I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second. All right. Okay. All right. Um, if there are no objections, then they are approved. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go on to committee updates. And I'll start from the bottom. Anna Lee. <laughs> um, yes. Um, just a note from the planning board, um, <clears throat> our Deerfield bylaws, chapter 37, have um, three different sections in them that talk about a little bit more planning board direct involvement with municipal projects than what we have essentially done in the past. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> we've been a little in a little bit of a conundrum about how to fulfill requirements, which I'll mention to you in a minute, when we haven't really been um, super appraised of the of the issues. So there's three sections. <laughs> One is to consider and advise upon municipal improvements. Another section is to examine plans and make recommendations for exterior and grounds of any public building or monument. And then the third, somewhat condensed, is that <clears throat> We respond in a timely manner to all plans um, uh, for the location, erection, alteration of public buildings. Um, and so we've, we've kind of mulled this. Um, the closest that we've come to is just making sure that we kind of keep our eyes to the ground and that other boards and committees, most particularly the select board and of course CCI, know that, I don't know, that's out there, that's in our Deerfield bylaws. And so 
FYI, and if you have any other suggestions at various times on how we can, in fact, uh, fulfill our responsibilities with this even more, especially when it's work in progress, then please come forward. Carolyn. <clears throat> I, I just want to say that I, I think the planning board, at least when I was on the planning board, we fulfilled that um, role by being participating in like here in the CCI, you got Andrea, you and yeah. Denise. Okay. And so it's not a public building. I, you know, that, that is participation. Um, you volunteer for um, review committees, you participate in public hearings. I mean, I always felt when I was on the planning board, that that was significant because it's so vague as to, you know, there's no vote required, there's no procedure required. So how we dealt with it, and Alan, um, please type in, cause you've had year, you had years and years on the planning board too. We just felt that if we were actively participating that fulfilled the bylaw requirement. Uh, like when we built when we built the school, you know, that was like a major thing for us. Um, we participated by going to a lot of the meetings for the design and then the site. And then, of course, I mean, they had to go to, through site plan re review. Right. Anyway. Right. So the, the whole thing, I mean, but that was formal yeah. and that is prescribed and, and a rule. But no. by participating on committees and then participating in the process, um, I felt like we all, I mean, if the planning board was completely zero participation and zero, you know, just missing in action, then I think there would be a problem. But it seems like Denise is on the, uh, I mean, Denise is actively voted by you to be on the capital improvement committee. And, you know, so I, I feel like we, and she, and she comes, I mean, she, participates 100%. So I, I feel like that is the fulfillment or the checking the box. Okay. Uh, Tim, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I mean, basically, um, it seems to me that, can you give any example of anything that's ever happened municipally that the planning board has not been involved in? I think that the language there is basically saying, planning board should have a role to play in this. Every municipal building project is going to end up going to the planning board, probably, with the possible exception of deciding, you know, to paint a room. Um, so, I think we talked about this before. But if you have a disagreement about um, that analysis, then we should explore it. But I, I really sometimes language is written in such a way that it's just difficult to understand whether it's saying. Does that mean the planning board has to go to the select board and force them to let us in? Or does that mean we're going to participate when a project comes up? So, I mean, that's the way I interpret it anyway. Okay. Emma? Um, I'm thinking specifically of the library building committee. And I don't know how much the planning board wants to be sort of on top of that before they, and have input in before they, um, before the, library building committee comes or whoever the library comes before the planning board so that was just that's just a, sort of an example of maybe that's a place where i don't know just throwing that out there okay Since that's that's the obvious one that's coming up right the library is putting together a building committee i can pass along this to the rest of the trustees or whatever the suggestion that perhaps someone from the planning board should also be included yeah yeah, I, mean, I think that's a perfect example. Actually. That would be good. I'll, I'll have to say, you know, the planning board is not necessarily looking for <laughs> more committee assignments or, you know, more involvement. So, but if we need to be, we need to be. I, I appreciate that, as you say, you know, many of us are on multiple committees. And I think the the charge is for us to remember that we're there really with our planning board hats on as well as what we'd like to see with the building committee or something like that. So right. yeah, Denise, did you have something to say? You're the chair. You should Yeah. I you know, I mean I, I agree with Tim, I think and, and Carolyn. I mean I think the language it, it depends how deep you want to interpret that, but I think that we're fulfilling that 
by three three pe people from the planning board being on CCI and really being, you know, acknowledging what's going on in town. I mean, it's not like we don't know what's happening. And it might be a question of making sure that the people who are on these various committee, planning board people who are on these various committees up their game a little bit more with bringing information back to the planning board in a little bit more of a substantive way. That might be, you know, on a regular well, basis. Well, we do report, and I do report on CCI. I, I can be more specific about what we discuss on CCI pertaining to any kind of buildings, you know, if that's what we need to do, or, you know, as Jim said, he can take it before the uh, trustees or, you know, the committee and see if he wants a planning board member on it, which is fine. You know, and then we can check with the planning board members and see who would like to be on it, which I don't see too many people probably raising their hands. I'd be, ha I'd be happy to participate. You know, I mean, it sort of goes hand in hand with the other other things that I'm doing. So, all right. Well, I'm glad to have the, the conversation. Uh, it is something that the planning board has been chewing. And so we're glad to bring it forward to other people and, um, you know, have it, have it be out there that we might be asking a few more questions or asking to be involved in ways that we haven't before. But I, I can't see that we would be doing that a lot. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thanks, Annalie. Anything else? I have something that's not related to this topic at all. Is that Julie Chalfont who pho who phoned it in? I yes. Hello. Okay, good. All right. Good. Then I then I I marked you as in attendance. You don't need to talk if you don't okay. want to. I just wanted to check. Hi, Hi, Julie. I had to find a rest stop before I could dial my phone. Okay. <laughs> And and the chief is glad to hear that. He's got yeah. a little ear to ear grin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, you dodged dodged a bullet on that one, Julie. Okay. <laughs> but, um MA, do you have something to report? Yeah, sure. Hi. Um Energy Committee, uh, we're still working with FERCOG on getting all the data necessary to get Frontier qualified for Deerfield's Green Communities granting. Um, it's going slower than we wished, but what else isn't? Um, we are currently working with Ben Wheel from UMass. He's the part of the UMass Extent, uh, Ener Clean Energy Extension. Um, ben Wheel, Bill Hildreth, and Darius now as of that we're set up a meeting, Darius has just set up a meeting uh, to come up with a plan that replaces the two very old boilers uh, at Frontier and will be the most efficient and use the least amount of natural gas. Um, and that meeting is scheduled for next week with Darius, which is good because uh, we've been sort of trying to get this on people's radar for a couple months now, and uh, and the article in the in the Greenfield Recorder sort of reminded us that it wasn't on anyone's, even though we've been trying, it wasn't on anybody's radar. So, because um, they said, "Oh, we're just going to buy two new bullet boilers," and our our point um, from the Energy Committee is is that buying two new natural gas boilers to replace the two old ones or even three smaller ones, you're still totally reliant on a fossil fuel. And there are ways hopefully to come up with a plan that has you phasing off fossil fuel and onto something more, uh, an alternative energy or electricity. And then, and then hopefully being able to put solar on the roof of, of Frontier and um, that would be that would be the long term plan. And Ben Wheel and the Energy Committee and Bill Hildreth went through Frontier, and and Ben Wheel came up with a plan um, that was a phase out kind of plan, which was pretty interesting. But um, it it's taken a while for it to, to it for for us to convince. Uh, to get to move that plan out of Bill Hildreth's office. Yeah. 
But I think that may be happening next week if all goes well. Oh, that's good. That's great. Uh, and then we have a new member on the Energy Committee, Jason Curtis, who, as you probably all know, is an engineer, Chris Curtis's brother, and Annie's husband. So, um, um, <laughs> huh? Chris Curtis, the Chris Curtis's son. Oh, his son. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was an age issue there. Anyhow, uh, that 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 being said, uh, he's um, just joined our committee. So, but I've been hoping that we can convince the library building committee, and I've talked to a couple of people, uh, uh, trust or people on the library building committee, or and or trustees to get um, J. Uh, Jason, as a member of the Energy Committee and as an engineer on the Frontier Building Committee, uh, he's still he's pretty busy, and so he's still a little bit up in the air about that. But um, I think he'd be a really good addition to um, to the Library Building Committee. Uh, could you clarify, Library or Frontier? Because you've said both. Uh, no, he's on the he's a new member on the energy committee, right. and I spoke to uh, both Judy Holmes and Beth Schmidt about the possibility of having him be on the library building committee. Got it. And now I'm speaking to you. I just wanted, I just wanted to clarify because you said frontier building. Oh, committee. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's definitely on the library. I just thought he'd be a, a you know a good addition to that that okay. committee. But he's busy, and he had. When I spoke to him, he was saying, "I, I consider it, a, it. It's definitely interesting to me. So maybe if the library put a little pressure on him, he might say yes. I've tried. I've, I've tried putting pressure on him. We'll get it from both sides, and maybe he'll say yes. Make the building committee big enough; they can build the building themselves. There, there. That's a possibility too. It'd be cheaper. Maybe not so good, but it'll be cheap. Um, Let's see. And then Annie Curtis, speaking of the various Curtises, uh, has approached uh, the Energy Committee to talk about green communities funding for the elementary school. Unfortunately, her kids were sick and this and that, so we haven't actually had that conversation yet. And slightly unrelated to that, in my final, well, no, not my quite my final thing, uh, the uh, Deerfield is looking for another representative besides me to the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. We have two slots and right now I'm the only rep. Uh, it's not a heavy lifting, but it's we have two voices on that committee and it doesn't hurt to have them there. So if anyone's interested in that, uh, it's three a meeting three times if three times a year, not real serious. May have you considered um, asking like Lori Busada? This seems like something she might be interested in. I think Lori's kind of up to her earballs, but I don't know. With teaching. Well, there's a guy sitting next to you. There yeah. is. He's really <laughs> up to his earballs. <laughs> I, I want to keep on the good side of him. I'm not asking. Okay. Um. And the only other thing which I thought was interesting, and I really don't know much about this, but when Jason came, Jason Curtis came to our meeting, um, he said that the reason he wanted to be on the energy committee was because NUPRO, and you all may know more about this, but NUPRO has pretty much said in one way or another that they don't want to uh, abide by our stretch, our legal obligation to our stretch code. And I guess, you know, um, Jason has been talking to the building commissioner and wants to, you know, be an assistant to him to make that happen because new pro really should not be able to uh, skip the uh, stretch code obligations and, and as they build their building. Hey, M.A., can, can you define what the stretch code is? I don't know that term. Yes. Um, it is. Uh, it is a, an, well, actually, I'm not sure it's much of a, an upgrade at this point, but when we first became a green community, one of the things that we had to do was agree to an, 
uh, and much a more a considerably more energy efficient building code. And the town had to vote on it. And the, the Massachusetts building code has been slowly catching up to that. But, um, and, but so, and the new, and there is a new stretch code about to be implemented by the state, which I think will kick it up another mm -hmm. level. And uh, I don't know what the process is gonna be. We might have to vote on it. They may be grandfathered by that, but they at least have to go by the original stretch code, which I guess they're from, according to Jason, they're a little reluctant to do. Okay. Which I don't think is good. And it's got, um, it just has higher insulation requirements. It has, you know, just more energy efficient building codes. I, I could be more specific, but. Okay. Carolyn, do you have a. I was just going to say, um, the select board is in charge of that. So we'll, we'll look into it. I, I believe the new stretch code is very similar to what we voted in. Uh, I mean, we were just making it happen a little bit earlier, but now the there is hardly any difference from my understanding. Well, there's um, very little difference between the current building code and the and our stretch code, but I right. think the state is looking at a and a whole new stretch code. Right. But yeah. I'm I'm just saying oh. I don't I don't think there's much difference. I don't and, know. And um and and actually that has not been my experience with NewPro because you know they are voluntarily going to work with Owen Warmser um, on trying to um, do healthy soils because they have to bring in a lot of soils. So I mean I, it seems like they're pretty okay. I don't know. I, I, as a, I'll, I'll, Jason, we'll check Jason, it out. We'll check Jason it out. is the one who brought this up. He's concerned, and I'm so I'm just okay passing it on. Okay. Right. Tim, you have your hand up. Yeah, I mean, I think the crux of this is there's a disagreement about when the stretch code kicks in. And I think New Pro is saying that their square footage doesn't fall into this. And Jason says, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And so um, it could come down to it, you know, before they get too much built, it could come down to getting a legal opinion about whether, in fact, the square footage does come under the stretch code and letting new pro know they got to meet the stretch code. Um, so that's good. Good that you brought it to our attention. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. Certainly don't want people who are building stuff to be deciding what the stretch code is. Yes, correct. Well, it might be good for Jason to have a conversation with the select board. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Emma. Yep. I'm done. Finished? Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to move on to Kate Lawless. Hi, everyone. Um, I was just looking back in my notes because it seems like a, a long time since our committee met. It's, it was um, November 15th, so or 14th. So um, we were at that time looking at um, meeting with or the select boards meeting with the DOT to um, kind of mesh the state's plans with our plan for the common. Um, I don't know if that meeting has happened. It's been a kind of a weird holiday. Um, 23rd. It's 23rd. Kind of happening on the yeah. 23rd? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so we're waiting for that meeting and then we're going to make a meeting after that. That is all. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, let's see who's next. Um, how about John? Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, Park is still working on a superseding order of conditions from uh, DEP and the two challenges to our zoning and, um, and I guess, uh, stormwater bylaws are still running in Franklin County Superior Court relative to the park project. So still working legally on all three of those issues, and we'll give you an update as, uh, as soon as we hear anything. Church, uh, Julie and I need to talk about getting an asbestos uh, mitigation firm on board to see if we can uh, start getting some of that asbestos out of there with the remediation. Town Hall, I've already told everybody there's uh, some painting that's gonna be done in the spring. And then uh, I know Kevin's got a couple of projects that he's looking at around there too. So I wanna meet with Kevin in the next couple of weeks to figure out what his spring's looking like. 1888 building, I think Julie can give a much better 
update of where we're at with the architecture firm that we've selected and all the great and amazing feedback we got from the uh, the town hall folks. So that's quick and simple with me. Thanks, John. Well, how about um, Julie, are you able to give a report? You hear Julie? I got stopped for speeding. Yeah, I know. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I fun. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I can give an update. I'm going to think and drive at the same time. We'll see how that goes. Um, so, Finance Committee, our first meeting, I think, is February 7th for the budget season. Um, we're going to do um, financial indicators, uh, the plan, uh, um, the estimate of revenues, and uh, look at past expend expenditures to date for this year. Um, so that'll be the first meeting, and then the following week we will kick off, you know, going through the individual budget. We will lay out a, um, a plan so all the different committees know when to come. Um, but I don't have that ready yet. I've been talking to Brenda about it. She's putting it together for us and talking to people about how to get that together. Um, we are trying to have all four school committees go to the Frontier Budget um, meeting so that we get to have that discussion with Frontier. And then I'm going to try and have the whole um, uh, finance committee go to the Deerfield Elementary School Committee meeting also. So hopefully we'll get a good discussion on both of those budgets. Um, and then I have a proposal out to, um, to Waitley and Sunderland to do a joint meeting of the three towns when we do the SCEMS and the South County Senior Center instead of having those groups and Tri-Town Beach instead of having those groups go individually to each finance committee. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to work that out. And I think that'll be good kind of all around. We'll have good discussions among the three committees and it'll sort of relieve some of the stress on both the South County Senior Center and SCIM having to go to three different finance committee meetings. But I don't know that we'll actually pull that off this year, but we're trying, so we'll see. Um, so that's finance committee. Building committee, um, the, we had a we have a proposal or a um, not really request for bids because the price isn't high enough to have to go through a formal request for bids, but we asked three companies to come and bid on the church structural engineering um, and we had a walkthrough of the church building again last week and I think they're going to have um, offer bids in this week, this Thursday, I think, Thursday or Friday, um, Casey's overseeing that. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to get a structural engineer going and get a plan for fixing the uh, roof of the sanctuary half of the building uh, is the main focus of that. And then for the 1888 building, the architect we did um, have very nice conversations with the people in town hall who will likely be going into the 1888 building. Um, and the architect, I think, came up with a very nice plan for the building. They are working on cost estimating, and we're going back and forth about that. Um, at the moment, I hope to uh, um, so the architect is working with an estimating company to come up with an estimate, and then the OPM is reviewing that estimate and sort of um, critiquing it, I guess. And uh, um, so I've been in on those discussions. I hope early next week that we'll be bringing it to the building committee um, to have a discussion, and then at that point we'll be ready to bring it also to the select board. Um, so I need to, I guess, tomorrow get get going on figuring out a date and getting that meeting posted and seeing if we can get on the agenda for the select board also. Uh, I don't have a dollar value yet. We're still going back and forth on it. Um, what else? I think that's, that's probably enough. Anything else I should have mentioned? No, it's great. 
That's pretty good, Julie. Um, thank you, Julie. Emid, did you have a question? You're muted. It's my same old question. Uh, has anyone figured out anything more about the bricks and whether we need to do substantial or not so substantial work on the exterior of the building? Yeah, so they had a structural engineer come in and they actually had a lift and inspected the whole masonry brickwork. Um, there is a proposal in for some masonry repairs and they are very detailed as to what repairs need to be done where and they have the whole like the face all four faces of the building laid out um on that so yes there's been a structural engineer in to evaluate the brick on the building okay so there isn't uh ben wheels concern about the bricks not being uh structurally sound and and then you know insulating from the inside being a problem has that been determined that that's not the case so um yeah <laughs> I guess. Okay. so the structural engineer looked at it we passed that concern on to them before the structural engineer went and looked at it um the there is um so it's not going to be fully insulated on the walls um, because of the concern of the falling. Yeah. Um, but I don't have details yet on like what degree of insulation will be applied or anything, but they, that concern was passed along and dealt with. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Julie. You know, j just something, um, Something with the 1880, 1888 building and the 1821 building, and I don't think they're currently on the historic registry, but I don't know what the process is to do that or to see whether that's worth it. And I know when you do that, you do have to, you know, there are certain rules and regulations as far as the, um, uh, the facade of the building, and you can't do too much with that, but you can do things internally and that could open us up to different grants. So I'm not sure. Lily, do you have any information? Well, the one thing I'm yeah, gonna say. I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead Lily. Oh. I was just gonna say the deck is really restrictive and expensive, but that you can get CPA money and Alan can back me up on this for a historic restoration of buildings that are not on the historic registry if you have the local historic mission or whatever, write a letter that says that this is important historical building. Okay. But, yeah, but that's, that's exactly it. right. And we already have that letter and um, we're already, I mean, we're already spending CPA funds on this, this batch of the, um, the 1888 building. Right. I mean, so the, the advice I got because um, we were looking at that and there are grants available and sort of the, I don't know how to, to say this, I'm not going to say this quite right, but the general feeling was that it would be more expensive to get it registered on the historic places and get the grants than it would be to do neither. Uh, mm -hmm. Because getting it registered as a historic whatever get you into a whole lot more expense that we don't have to deal with if we aren't on the registry. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Thanks, Julie. Then, yeah, we talked about that. Time. That was the feedback I got. I don't know. But yeah. I, I well, did remember one more thing that I meant to mention, though. Um, we were having discussions with the uh, mechanical engineer who's designing the, the HVAC system for the 1888 building. And what he said is that, at, like right now, you can go with this VRF system inside it, you can go geothermal or air source heat pump. But once you buy the air source heat pump equipment, you're not going to want to convert to geothermal because it would be sort of prohibitive when you have these brand new units, it would be prohibitively expensive to 
ditch those and convert to geothermal. So we need to make that geothermal decision before we buy the equipment for the 1888 building. And the same is, I imagine, true for the library. Um, and so we'll need to, like, we have more control right now over the pace of the 1888 building. We may decide that we want to wait a year before we do it or something. I don't, I don't know yet. Um, but the, kind of the sooner the better if we can hear anything about the geothermal. Not that we have any control over that, but. Right. Well, Ju Julie, that's, that's good to know because t we were just on a, the building committee before this meeting, Tim said that we're supposed to find out sometime in March whether we do get this, this one of the geothermal. So I think that's good March. timing. Yeah. And the, the library's not starting until what, uh, October, September, October 2023. So it seems to me that we're going to know about the geothermal prior to making any time. Beautiful. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, that would be great. Good. All about the timing. <laughs> great. Thanks, Julie. Anything else or y'all set? Nope. She must I think be I'm upset now. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Julie. All right. Uh, Trevor. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, just touching on the, uh, the church building. Um, I, our last board of oversight meeting at the uh, South County Senior Center Waitley and Sundown are very interested in a walkthrough. Um, I'd love maybe Julie to be there or anybody else who wants to be there. They're really struggling and you know, they're trying to figure out where do we go? We have a, a grant to try and evaluate what we're gonna do. They would love to have a walkthrough of the place, um, decide if it would be a good temporary space for them um, long-term, uh, you know, short, short term, long term, five years or more as we look to do something different in the long run. But um, so I wanted to try and set up a time where we could just have them walk through and get their eyes on it, get their buy in, have us all decide, is this something we really want to do? We, we talked about putting an RFP out for space. Um, and, and really, we wanted to kind of have this walk through first, if it's not going to be something that makes sense for them long term, then you know, I say long term as in five years or so, um, then they can they can work on something different. But but I think they really are interested in it. They're just concerned and want to make sure that air quality is good and you know it would be a decent enough space. I kind of said that regardless of whether you move in or not, like the town consensus is that we want to save the building. So if we're going to do anything with it, we need ADA bathrooms, you know, so we need to do this stuff regardless of who goes in there, but it would kind of steer us a bit more if we knew that it was going to be a home for them for five years. So, um, or however long. Um, so I was just wondering, I want, I keep kind of neglecting to, to kind of mention this and get this going. We should just have a quick walkthrough. Is, is the space enough? If we use the whole sanctuary, how could we split it up? Just get a, a quick kind of idea, does this make sense long-term or not? I mean, cause that's really everyone's intention, but until we have the buy-in of the Board of Oversight and the director, you know, we just, we're kind of kicking tires. So I'd love to kind of get that going. And if Julie would want to meet us or anybody who has a little more insight than I do on the space. And I'm not sure what the time frame of um, the repairs are. I know they've been pushed off a bit for various reasons, which is fine. Um, so. <clears throat> I just wanted to kind of mention that, that we should do that little walkthrough pretty quick. Yeah. Well, Trevor, uh, Trevor I, yep. I'd, actually, I'd actually like to be there because I've been- Oh, you're welcome to, sure. Of course you a can. Lot with that. You know, I mean, yep. we have that money, we've got the 75,000 for the feasibility study as to what, you know, what what we can do with the building. Right. And we also, um, uh, Casey and I just met with two people, two women from mass development because we're going to be putting in another, another application for community one stop. Okay. And so they, they came out and did a site visit yesterday, which was great. Oh, nice. And so we're talking about for the community one stop, they, they talked about doing a, multiple projects. We can do up to five projects. Yeah. Um, submit it, I think, by February 2nd. I don't know whether we're going to get five projects by then, <laughs> but they, they did suggest that it would be great to. Uh, 
do the 1888 and 1821 building together in mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And um, we talked about, because it's it's really got to be, we, we can do it for pre-development. We can't do it for actual building. We can do it for pre-development. Right. If we get the funding, we can put another one in for the actual uh, mm -hmm. building for more money. But, um, you know, we did talk about using it as a transitional senior center and then community use. Even if it's used right. for the senior center, we've got that big room. We can use it for dinners. We can use it for plays. Mm -hmm. We can use it for yep. recitals. I mean, exactly. Any things yeah and yep. you know they they thought oh my god there's a kitchen obviously the kitchen has to be redone yeah. so i mean you know there are a lot of different things going on with that building and you know i just i would really hope that joyce and tom can you know keep their eyes open look yeah at i think they can i think they can i just really yeah we'd love to just have everyone there to kind of do a walk through okay. and see what it could be and, and can it work i think it can so yeah. let's just yeah, see how we go from there. Okay, um, so that, that was it on that. Um, okay. You know, the sewers rolling along very well, just the South Deerfield plant. Um, I did a, uh, we had our meeting at the beginning of the month and um, which is our monthly meeting. I had a, a nice chance to really walk through all the buildings and see the progress and the secondary clarifier mechanics are going in and it's looking great. Um, launder walls are in and the uh, a lot of the center you know, post for the secondary clarifier are in, and they're working on, we're, we're waiting on a lot of electrical, which has been the problem all along. We just keep getting bumped and bumped and bumped. We have some electrical, but a lot of the electrical for the, for the project has um, been back ordered and back ordered and back ordered. So um, that's holding up stuff. But luckily we did sign the, you know, the change order, which uh, allowed us um, time to work on the aeration tanks, which is, um, which is what they're doing in the meantime. So it's not like they've got to close up everything and leave and then come back. It's, it's allowed them to kind of fill in other work while they're waiting for other stuff. And so we're working with, um, I'm hoping next month we can get together with USDA and kind of nail down when the closing might be, if we'd have an, an, an idea on the, um, on the electrical. I just want to get all the financing lined out so we know when we can close on the loans spend out the rest of the grant money and make sure that's that's used up um but the but the project is right on target and it's it's been very very good to see um there's like hardly any issues hardly any changes it's been it's been really nice and it's a beautiful facility amazing structures in there so um really excited for mma this week um it's going to be fun to get down there and um see people and and i know we've we had a meeting yesterday on talking about all the things that we're going to go and see and do, which is really exciting to get back there. So that's all I've got. Thanks, Trevor. I know, Tim, you have your hand up and then MA. Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, if this pre-development is kind of similar to what we're already doing in the 1888 building. And so would we more likely get more benefit for the 1821 where we haven't done anything or, or is there a difference? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, we were talking about, you know, putting them together, but we did talk, we did mention um, some of the things that are already happening in the 1888 building. So when we do, when we put in the, um, the letter, the expression of interest, we'll be writing all of that. So that's, you know, once, once we have that down on paper and then they get to see it, then they can help advise us which direction to go. And we've got, we have them up until, up until um, we submit the grant. So you know their advice, and I'll tell you they were they were great. They were really gung ho, really excited to work with us. So excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ma. Yeah, I was just going to ask Trevor if there once that project is done, is there going to be any space there for solar? Any which empty, empty space? ground? Uh, oh, sorry, wastewater treatment plant in South Dakota. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> There's about oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I and, just, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. You know, there is possibility on the back side of the process building, which I think is facing south and might be actually really good for that. So yeah. I think it did. I I think they did plan for that. So. Um, uh, there's not much on the ground, but but certainly on that building and 
possibly on the main building, you know, the one that we didn't do anything with, because yeah. that's got a big, big space, but I'm not sure what's up there. But definitely the, the process building is a very large space facing south. So I, I would, would imagine we could put something on there. The reason I was asking is because we're working with UMass on a solar plan. And so I'm oh. just sort of collecting UMass is yep. trying to design a, a solar plan for the town. Great, great. Yeah, we could look at the plans and, and see uh, and talk to Dave on that for sure. Okay, yeah, thanks. Good. Wonderful. Thanks, Emma. Hey, Tim, hey, just going back to just what you said about the pre development, you know, it would be really helpful um, as we get together with Alice, a grant writer, to do submit uh, the expression of interest. It would be really helpful if I had sort of a checklist of where we're at for the 1888 building, as well as Trevor, if you have any information for the 1821 building, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, you know. I mean, that, yeah. that would be really helpful because that would help inform, you know, right. Hey, hey, John, do you, I don't know if you're still on, but did, did you know what their time frame is on that? I, I know it got pushed off a bit. Uh, there was an injury and then scheduling and stuff, but. Yeah, Tom just got back to work about two, two and a half weeks ago. So, yep, I've got to touch base with Jeff and see if I can get a, a timeline on them. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's urgent, but it's not super urgent because we really don't know what we're doing yet either. I feel like, hate to have, I mean, we, I think we know what we're doing, but, you know, if we had a better solid plan about what the building's going to be used for, it'd be great. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, once I get a timeline, I can touch base with everybody and kind of loop okay. everybody in. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks. Uh, Tim? So yeah, just wondering if if um, some of the work like uh, asbestos remediation plan, um, foundation, if all of those things, designing stuff, if that could be considered pre-development, then we could save some of, I mean, obviously the grant money, we got to spend it in the way they want us to spend it. But maybe we can focus on different parts of the building um, in 1821. So anyway, that's it. Yeah. Regardless of what we do, learning what qualifies yeah. as pre-development would be helpful for the conversation. Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, you know, for the timeline for this, it's really sort of annoying because it takes so long. You know, we uh, submit the expression of interest and then get feedback on that, you know, or various projects. And then I think I'm trying to remember when you submit it, submit propose the actual grant proposals in June. They look at them throughout the summer and we don't find out until I think later in October, early November. And you don't get the actual money until January. So that's that's the timeline. So it's you know, it's really trying to yeah, juggle all that along with the other projects. So yeah. okay. But if I have a list of that, and you know, I mean, Julie, I know you're listening. If you had you know, just a little paragraph or something you could write, and Trevor, just anything that you could write yep. um, sure. in, in the next week would be really great because we okay. we get on it. So you know, the sooner we we submit this, we'll you know we'll get the feedback and we can go back and forth. You know, which which will be great. okay. Okay, thanks. Um, how about let's see who's next? Carolyn. Um, the MVP program um or the committee met um it wasn't a posted meeting so i actually didn't go tim tim went uh, but the expression of interest is due this friday and so um the committee is is going to put in for the leary lot or voted to put in for the leary lot the elementary school tree boxes up in old deerfield off of main you know old main street that would um take care of the stormwater runoff um green streets you know if this we're pursuing you know with mass dot trying to get um you know property from them just around the common so we can move forward with the common so i don't know if that's the timing's going to be i mean that's a slow boat project so we'll have to see about the timing of that and then healthy healthy soils some healthy soils initiative which i think they will support but um, you know, I'm on the work group for the state commission on that to implement that. And so the state's just starting all that process. So this would be very preliminary. Um, the actual RFP goes out in March. It's a May deadline for all of the whatever projects we end up choosing, um, depending on the feedback. 
And then the money would probably be released sometime, maybe August, September. So the timeline is a little bit wiggly. Um, I don't know, you know, it depends on the new administration. They might be faster, they might be slower. So it's it's really discouraging. M.A., do you have a question? Uh, are the meadows still in that mix of the letter of interest? Oh, you mean the, our yard by yard program? Yeah. Well, yeah, and whatever. I mean, getting oh, all that, that program, uh, the conservation district at the state commission meeting last week, we did find out that the conservation district supposedly is getting a contract. All that will be announced by the J January 31st. But I meant so, in relation to MVP, because that was one of the things, one of the options that we were talking about. Oh. Oh, okay. That it might be. I, I that wasn't on the list that Chris gave me. Oh, no. So, okay. but the Franklin Conservation District um, is supposed to get its grant, and so we're hopefully scheduling with Owen Worms or to do public outreach. Yeah. We'll have money for raffling off some of his books. We'll raffle off some actual designs of his in people's yards. And then we will uh, do installation and plants raffling right. off. So I'm kind of excited because this is yeah. going to be a fun thing to do over the winter. So hopefully the grant will be released so that we can actually, you know, have him come on board. So that's kind of exciting. So our own, one of our own initiatives will be funded anyway um, through the conservation district. Yeah. The uh, Capital Improvement Committee is just getting going. Um, Mark Brennan is trying to get us organized for a meeting next week. And um, so we'll be reporting that um, in the next CCI meeting, I'm sure. There are a couple issues that came up in South County. We have been um, putting aside money every year for um, an ambulance. This is, so it should be replaced in, in our this coming fiscal year. And um, we have the money that's set aside. However, because of the pandemic and supply change, it's it's a two-year waiting list for the ambulance. And it's actually, instead of 250,000, it's now, uh, if we ordered it tomorrow, is 363,000. So it's been quite expensive uh, going forward. And we actually voted last night for life packs um, to be uh, a, a ALS service and you know be a paramedic level service, you have to have the equipment to you know do the um, hearts and stuff, cardiac stuff. And um, those life packs are reaching their end of life. Uh, they are eight years old. They need to be replaced by ten years old, and um, they could break at any time. And there's no parts. And that is an 18 month wait. And those are $50,000 a piece. So we ended up deciding that we're already gonna be short for the ambulance. So we're recommending that Zach move ahead with the purchase of the life packs. And then we'll figure out what we're gonna do about the ambulance at some point. Buy additional duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just be very careful. The economy is going to change. We're already seeing a massive surplus of vehicles. Used car prices are dropping. Don't instantly buy into the song and dance. Take a breath. Take a step back. Things are going to cool. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's yeah, hope so, because we're starting to see it already. Just take a breath and don't jump on board because you're being pressured. Yeah, well, we're we're holding off on the ambulance for sure. Good. <laughs> At this point. Tim? Question? Yeah, I just wanted to echo that um, since we know um, the life packs are in such a, you know, what they've done is they've changed the design and the new design has been accepted. So they're not making the old design anymore and they're not, you know, really wanting to fix them. And the cost of repairing could be half the cost of buying a new life pack. So it makes much more sense if we don't have. Uh, life packs that work on our existing two ALS qualified um, uh, EMT uh, ambulances, they can't they can't bill or they can't provide these services. So your 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 money come from services goes down, and so 
if both of those things failed, we could end up basically not being able to do what we're paying to have done, which is save people's lives with heart, heart issues and so on. So it made a lot, a lot more sense to, to buy the smaller things. Yeah. So now it has to go to the two other communities and see what they say and then through town meeting. But the money's there to buy it. And um, so since it's an 18 month period, we advised uh, uh, the chief to think about put, putting in an order for them um, now during the FY23 issue so that uh, the 18 months will be as close as it can be to actually getting the new equipment. I always wonder whether that's just a better design or just planned obsolescence because it's sheer greed. <laughs> but yeah, oh well, guess we can't answer that one. Okay. Well, Carolyn, any other um, uplifting information to give us? No? No? I'm 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 well. We're excited about the MMA. We're we're gonna go get money. We gotta get be positive. <laughs> okay. Woo, thank we're gonna, you. We missed out on the ARPA money, but <laughs> we're going for the IRA money, Inflation Reduction Act money, and we're gonna make a big point that we didn't get anything for ARPA. Anybody out here in Western Mass, so they really need to make sure that we're included for the IRA money. That's and right. I, really feel Laura, that Laura Healy seems to be really love Western Mass so she needs to step up and help us with this <laughs> I know well I, th I think it is I think we have a good argument for you know really all that money has been appropriated for for the out east and you know it's really not fair I mean yeah. Orange got a little extra money be because they had that big fire so they got some money, but their community was devastated. So of course yeah. they should have gotten some money, but nobody else got, even Springfield or Holyoke, nobody got any extra real money. So um, mm -hmm. we gotta we gotta advocate. Right. Good luck. All right. <laughs> well, hopefully none of us will get sick. <laughs> I have to tell you, Tim and I and, and Trevor are kind of a little nervous about that. <laughs> so Amherst, by the way, got money for their library. What? Amherst. Yeah, they got they got money. Yeah. Yeah. They were one not of the real money. They got some money. Well, yeah. they got a million bucks. <laughs> yeah, but that's not they were looking for twelve. Yeah. Yeah. But a million's not chump change, yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Jim. Jim. So the library um has been assembling a building committee. Um we talked about that at the campus working group earlier. Um, they've got um, obviously the library, Candace and the, the head of the uh, Tilton Fund ex officio will be on it. Um, Tim will be on it. Um, they have, I believe, uh, Julie will be on it at least for now, although we have some other good people on the finance committee, so we might change that up. Um, uh, and uh, the proposals that were made tonight about possibly adding an energy and the planning um, um, members seems, I'll pass <laughs> that along to them. Um, they also wanted to bring in two community members. Um, uh, uh, Ava Tor, who lives near the library and is an engineer, and um, Vern Harrington, who is the head of um, Thayer Associates, in the building is. I don't know. I I don't know what the their status is, whether they've accepted formally or not. Um, next library meeting is in a couple of weeks. Um, but I will certainly bring along the proposals to add a couple more members to that committee because um, uh, you know I'll I'll, br I'll bring it up at the next library meeting anyway. Hey Jim, um, I don't know anything yeah. about the state of fundraising at the moment. I have not heard any new numbers uh, from Eric Phelps. Um, and that's really about it. We are yeah. discussing interim locations. That's been going back and forth with, well, among other things, the campus working group and the CCI and everybody else who wants to put an oar in the water. Um, uh, I believe we're, the. I believe the, We've got now from Candace the requirements that MBLC has, which are basically not much, you know, a place in your town or near it. 
it doesn't if you can't find anything in your town it can be just near it um i think you have to have something like 10 percent of your collection in it which you know for the tilton is not a whole lot so and that would probably be heavily slanted towards the children's collection um uh we were looking we're still you know trying to figure out what buildings would be usable everybody seems to like the idea of the cumberland farms building on the common uh but we need to find out whether cumberland farms likes that plan <laughs> hey jim i just i just heard i don't know whether this is true or not but i was down at town hall yesterday and the rumor has it that someone bought Cumbies. I don't know. That would be in the registry of deeds, I would think. Interesting. I had not heard that. Um, I don't know who who's the person that owns a lot of the buildings across his, across from the common. I don't remember his name. It begins with a K or something. Jason Kitsa. Yes. And the rumor was that he possibly bought Cumbies. I don't know, but you. Know, may want to check that out. And yep. another question I have, Jim, before I forget, is that I just got an email from Candace at three o'clock this afternoon. I guess Tim wrote a letter, great letter. Um, and she said, please share with your committee and request their signatures, give me their names to add to the oh, letter. Yes. Posting yes, this, yes. but she wants by the end of the week, it's Wednesday, you know, a bunch of us are leaving for an MMA conference tomorrow. Is it just saying, yes, you can put our names on the letter? Or does she want the physical signature? Because that's I think not the idea happen. is to send in, you know, a big pile of paper with lots of people's names signed on it, you know. Well, just typed on it. She doesn't want the actual or actual signature, does she? Uh, that's a question I do not know the answer to. Well, no. you know what? It's, it, I mean, if she wants no, it by no. the end of the week, at least four of us will not be, probably will not be able to do that. I mean, um, it would be I'll nice to clarification on that uh, i can give that clarification for you um Thank you, the idea is that if we say yes tonight she can use all our names then okay. she, she's going to type it on the bottom of the thing it's not you don't have to sign anything okay you're going to send out an email and ask people and if they say yes it's going to add their names so that's what it is so okay because she said she's she's posted in the library for patrons to sign that's why right. i was wondering that she actually want her signature Okay, so should we take a vote on, uh, does, every, does everyone feel comfortable on CCI putting their signatures on this? What is this? Can you please state for the record clearly what we are? Yeah. The letter that Tim wrote. Tim, why don't you, since you I'm gonna wrote, try and find, find it in my email. Basically oh, what it says is, um, and Jim helped write this too, basically okay. says that uh, you know libraries are great for the community they provide a lot of functions. We, the undersigned, want to reiterate our support for this library expansion project, and we need extra money from the state. Legislators, please consider in your uh, in your new session giving us more money. And we mentioned the other eleven communities, so it's um, less specific than some previous letters, and and more, you know, I I guess ingratiating. I don't know if that's the right word, but. Um, and we still haven't figured out exactly which legislators we're going to send it to, but it's going to be on library letterhead of some kind, whether it's the friends or it's the Tilton trustees. And Jim may know more about that, but uh, I yeah, and I can send it to you all the latest version. I'll I'll go in and after I okay, sign, I'm fine. Email. Let's I sign up. Yeah, I'll sign up. yeah. Okay. So is that good. Uh, thank you? Every so. Um, it looks like everyone but Julie. But do we need a motion for this um, to make it legit? Well, or for I, I think they just want individual names, not the committee. Is that yeah. what you're looking for? Right. So, um, so everybody, yeah, everybody present should be, if they say yes, then they can yeah. just take the name. Yeah. Tell you what, everybody just email me your names and I'll forward them to Candace. I think it's, that that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's on the agenda from tonight. All our names are here. Just cross off the ones so, who aren't here. So if you, if we're clear, if everybody wants to be on it, then that's what we'll do. Take okay. off Satu, take off Darius. All right. And everyone else should be fine. And do me a favor, make sure mine has a junior after it. I don't want to be known as grouchy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so I'm confused. I'm taking notes here. Are we supposed to email Jim? I th we're I'll just no. send her the list. If we're yeah. all on the agenda, then don't bother. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Right. John, paste. John, do you still have your hand up or you just want don't want us to call you grumpy? No, I actually had a, a quick question about the uh, the building committee appointments. Who who's making the appointments for the library building committee? Uh, it is a committee appointed by the library board. I'm just wondering for legality purposes because it's town money. It's not technically library money. The trustees don't control that funding. The select board does. So shouldn't it technically be a select board vote? Tim. Uh, we we the uh, trustees is an entirely separate entity from the town that is town funding. Yeah, well, um, John, I think we uh, well we appointed Tim, and we and I I think we went through the list. We did. We approved the list. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty but sure that we, Julie was going to be okay with it because we didn't hear from Julia, but we thought and we're hoping she was going to be okay to be on it. Well, we've, yes, we voted Julie as interim because we hadn't heard from Julie, but um, everybody else we appointed as um, was suggested. Yeah, I just don't want somebody to poke holes in it. There's a lot of naysayers out there. So for technicality purposes, the money is not the trustees. It is the town of Deerfields. Right. And and we did vote. The select board Good, voted perfect. the contract. Good, good. Yeah, we voted the contract. And then I think we voted that. I'm pretty sure we voted the committee. Okay. All right, Jim. Um, so was there anything else or are you all set? That's all okay. I had. Any, okay, any other questions for Jim? No, we're good on that. Okay, all right, thanks. Okay, how about Lily? Senior housing has been really busy. <laughs> um, we have Thanks to Carolyn, Kevin, um, South Deerfield Water Department. We have got the fire flow data for North Main Street and Conway Street. We have got the gas lines, the electrical lines, the sewer lines, the water lines flagged. Um, contacted Berkshire Design yesterday, and they are going to go out and do the documentation. This is for all of the buildings on the campus. So um, this is a really um, important step to get done and there's no documentation beforehand. And um, uh, Berkshire Design is going to share it with the, I can't remember if it's P3 or 3P, but the, subcontractors for the 1888 building who ironically requested Berkshire Design to do it, but Senior Housing Committee, we get stuff done. You know, I corrected myself really quickly. Um, <laughs> um, senior Housing is also coming to do a presentation to the select board on January 25th or 26th, I'm not sure which. We, our market feasibility study is complete. We are doing some wordsmithing on the report to make it human readable, but it confirms very strong demand and very strong need for subsidized senior housing in Deerfield, which is not at all surprising, but is still a necessary document for um, finance groups. Um, it's such, such a strong need and demand that the consulting firm who are who are based in I think the Worcester or in Eastern Mass started rattling off developers that would be very interested in doing a development here. So that that's a, a positive feeling. Um, so we're doing a we're going to meet with the select board January twenty fifth or twenty sixth, and then we are um, gathering up the campus. Uh, trifle that Denise made, and um, we are going to the Deerfield. Is it South Deerfield Women's Club or the Deerfield Women's Club? South Deerfield. South Women's Deerfield Club. Women's Club. And we're going to be doing the first of community outreach, and we're going to be talking about the campus and um, 
and the and we will be talking about CCI and giving people the idea because we need to a really huge important part of this whole thing is community outreach. Um, and along that line, uh, we oh we are also almost finished our community preservation committee application. Um, but we would request we would like to request a letter of support from this committee to submit with our um, community preservation committee application. So um, I would ask. Uh, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye aye aye. You're aye, aye. You guys are out. I'm going to assume Julie said, of course, <laughs> she's keeping okay. her hands on the wheel. Um, and I think that that might be it. Let me run through really fast. Utilities flag, market study, site feasibility, application for CPC. Okay, now I'm putting on my CPC hat. Um, so uh, hang on, I have to, uh, since I'm also <laughs> taking notes here, um, CPC. Um, Alan's here, but um, basically, I, I don't know if he wants to speak or not, but I, I'll just keep rolling. Um, we've begun meeting. The new, new folks are coming up to speed nicely. Applications are due March 1st. And so please, if you know of any projects that historical, open space and recreation, or um, affordable housing, that might be interested please let people know in the application there is a link to a really good infographic that helps people understand if their project is suitable for cpa funding anything else you want to add alan um just one uh, real quick uh, follow-up um and i lily and i have been communicating about this but I've, I've reached out to, uh, to Brenda and um, trying to get the most current update on our funding that will be available for this round of applications. And um, so uh, it, there's a kind of a gap there between kind of the end of the fiscal year and um, seeing what's come in now on these more recent matches um, and whether or not yeah, we've also got information that, that I've seen that makes sure we have all of our encumbrances uh, accounted for, like the late, the things that were passed, say, for example, in last town, town meeting. So I'm gonna be, I emailed her and she's very aware of it. And um, I'll be meeting with her or talking with her on the phone in the next, well, within the next week. So we'll be able to um, kind of put the word out there. And also this is really important for us because there's a lot of evidence that we're probably going to see more uh, requests for money than we may have available and unencumbered. So we'll uh, keep you posted on that. Yes, and and Chief, um, I was trying to remember if the first park application, um, I think we get three years and- um, Yep, it's coming up due. Okay, so yeah, if, our first year was 2020, and then our second year was 2021. We added money. So for the 2020, I think you might need to reapply. I don't know, Alan. Is that the case? Um, it, there is a kind of an understanding that you can request an extension um, if you haven't uh, expended the funds by that end of that window. So yeah, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Yeah, I'm just wondering legally from Lisa Mead if uh, if when we asked for more money in 2021, does that reset the tone for a new starting date for the whole project? And I don't know the answer to that, but that'd be a quick question for Liga. Probably not because it was two separate buckets. Yeah. yeah. And gotcha. so I'm thinking if I think that's the case. We can follow up on that, Chief, and see whether, sure. yeah, um, that would be the case. But I I think it is my understanding that, yeah, those were two separate proposals. And they would follow that time, their, their respective timelines. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And oh, I, you. so I, I would need some calls say that, as needed. Yeah. The sooner you get it into us, the, the, the better, because 
things will really be hitting the fan in March. And so I'm just saying that if, if anybody knows any projects they want to get done, I would get them in sooner rather than later. Okay, excellent. Uh, Tim? And I would just say that um, some of the original money lo uh, donated to the park project was um, already expended. We bought the land and we did planning. So it would be good to know <clears throat> what he needs to ask for reauthorization on. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Did, did the 2020 application cover the land purchase so the 2021 one is different? But that's a legal question. Yeah. M.A.? Uh, yes, Greg Franceschi was is interested in and was asked going to ask advice about from from the uh, from my husband here uh, about the uh, likelihood of getting money for um, bike path this this round or whether probably all the money was spoken for and it would be better to put it off. Uh, you got to apply. Well, I know, but he, is there any, any, you don't have any advice for him? I would for, get, my advice is go for it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. All right. I'll pass that on. Thank you, Lily. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You all set, Lily? Okay. Thanks. All right. Andrea. Hi, um, I don't know if, I'm sorry, I joined late. I had an appointment. Um, I don't know if Alan talked about uh, open space committee. The open space plan, I believe has now been, no, has now been submitted, I believe. Um, thank you to the planning board for its letter of support. That one I know um, we got because it came to me and I sent it forward. I hope the select board also sent one to Folks, I don't know if that happened or not. Do we know, select board? I think we authorized one, whether it's been sent as a... Okay, well, at least we have one from the planning board. Um, it, it, yeah. Um, the other thing to tell you is that the committee, well, number one, we've, um, uh, Alan has arranged for someone who has been instrumental in helping um, the members of the planning board actually joined the planning board as a member. So this is really very good that she's um, joining us. We have uh, another official member. This and is open space. This mean. is open space, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Julie Caswell is now joining the, the, the committee. Um, Julie and I attended a webinar for Mass Trails, which has a grant, um, for, uh, has grants uh, for trails. And one of the things that the committee um, determined from the survey that we gave out to uh, town members is that people want to see walking trails, hiking trails and biking. Um, and so the first thing that we thought we would do is apply for walking trail money. Um, and the due date is February 1st. There's no way it's gonna be this year. So we, we talked to the people who, uh, at Mass Trails. The grant application has been pretty standardized over the years. It's all done online. And so the committee is going, is going to take it upon itself um, to write a grant application to be submitted by February 1st, 2024 for trails, um, walking trails. Uh, so it's sort of low hanging fruit. We know where um, certain trails are. We know that they're not um, signed. We know that there aren't, uh, th there aren't maps of some of these places or they are, but they're not readily available. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. And I believe four of the members of our committee, possibly five, have all written grant applications in the past. And so we are planning to take it upon ourselves to do this. Um, that's in the first, that, that's what we planned for the first uh, year. Um, the sec in the second year, we're probably going to, here's cat, we're probably going to um, apply for a grant for water trails because water can also be um, a trail. Cat. And um, we know that people are very interested in river access, but we got to do one thing, one thing at a time. And so first 
uh, one is gonna be uh, walking, hiking. The second one we hope will be um, related to our rivers and, uh, and waterways. So that's sort of where we are. So is there a question from somebody? Or uh, Alan, you wanna? Well, I, just to follow up, you, you gave a very good summary of, of the, everything that's going on. I, I just uh, wanted to point out, I have, I've reached out to Casey a couple of times now about um, getting uh, Julie Caswell appointed to the committee and um, I've not heard yet any anything, but I think Dan Graves was the one to appoint. Was it you, Andrea? Yeah, he appointed me. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I'm thinking of just writing a letter directly to you as the select board uh, requesting on behalf of the Open Space Committee that uh, Julie Caswell be appointed. And if there's any kind of directive that you want to give me about doing that, but. I think we want to try to get this done. She's been tremendous, has a real lot, a great deal of knowledge about the walking trails and hiking trails in town and came to every meeting and actively really involved also in the drafting of the open space proposal. So we're very excited about uh, getting her officially on board as soon as possible. Agreed. Anybody have any questions for us? I do have a question if I can. Have. Sure. Um, so for the, I'm all in favor of free money. Um, so here's for applying for the grant, but can you also um, think about the reporting requirements for the grant and can the committee take on the obligation to accomplish all of the, should you receive the grant to a, accomplish any reporting requirements that go along with that? Yes, we understand that. Awesome. Thanks. That is a very good question and a very good response. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's that, you know what? That's always a huge question because our ad, administration is varied and some grants are just horrible for reporting. So I, it's always a great great question. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I think another, another piece of that, I'm just gonna add this in. Um, don't forget maintenance money. That's what we, the other piece that we always forget. Yeah, good point. Okay, um, Tim, your turn. So um, the Leary lot um, land transfer is in the hands of ours and Doug Hamshaw of Hamshaw Lumber's lawyers. They are going to be working on writing all the legal documents that are necessary to transfer the ownership of each parcel. Um, and so that's in process. Congratulations. Yeah. And then I think it has to go to town meeting again so that we can approve the documents. But um, corollary to that is that we need to update the Leary lot plan. So the select board should start thinking about re-engaging with the engineering firm that did it. There's also an MVP component of it, which um, is going to be in the letter of interest, which would be um, mm -hmm. rain gardens and, and other, um, you know, environmentally friendly elements of the Leary Lot project. Um, and geothermal, as somebody mentioned, we submitted our updated uh, application um, overall, it was an interesting process. The reviewers um, seemed to think it was a good project and a good application, but one reviewer said very detailed plan for strength and then weaknesses, not a lot of detail. <laughs> so you sort of have to take these things. And there were only two reviewers out of four people who were supposed to review it, but overall the technical, the technical aspects got really high marks. We responded and um, we're supposed to hear back by March. I don't know if that's the beginning or the end. Um, and then um, money would arrive. Negotiations for getting the money if we are awarded a, a grant would uh, take place in the spring. So that would dovetail with all of our plans for 1888 library, 1821 um, and senior housing should that move forward. Um, and the good news is that if we do get it and we do build it, um, we know that it's compatible. We just have to buy the right equipment for each building. So that's a very positive thing. Um, 
spoke with Natalie Blade today, and I'm trying to clarify whether there's any ARPA money left. My understanding was that there was $1.75 billion in ARPA funds still left to the state, but the state may have plans for all that money, which means we're not going to get any of it. But one, one possible thing is that some of it would be put into pothole account to help us with our library. But uh, she said that she'll get back to me next week because the deadline for writing bills is Friday. So she's got other, thing, other things on her mind. Um, as as uh, <clears throat> Carolyn mentioned, um, MVP is focusing on the DES entrance and the Leary lot as the big, big dollar um, applications for this year. We, we were out of MVP for one year. And so we sort of had to re you know re-energize the the process, so we're a little behind. And um, let's see, I one thing I wanted to bring up because I just saw this. I had sent um, Natalie Blay and and Joe Comerford a question about whether we could meet with either the House or the Senate Ways and Minute Means leaders about the library while we were in Boston. And she said, "Well, you really you know." probably need to plan three months ahead and everybody's writing their bills, so no. But Carolyn, you may know what she's saying here, but I'm gonna read three paragraphs. I wanted to point out to you an outstanding piece of Deerfield planning. You had wanted us to advocate for Deerfield's master plan and mass DOT is willing. I'm afraid we're now down to the wire on the agenda for Monday's meeting. Our teams bumped and email. I don't know what that means. We need to hear back from Deerfield by noon tomorrow, Thursday, or we risk having an unproductive meeting. Thanks for your service. So, Carolyn. You're muted, you're muted. Carolyn. You're muted, Carolyn. You're still uh, muted. Sorry. That usually is not my problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that means our list, Tim, that we put together, we need to say that that's the agenda items we want to talk about. Um, we had put on the, you know, the the land transfer around the common. We put on, um, you know, I mean, there was a whole list of stuff that we had. The And you know, who has that list? I, I think Casey. Um, so maybe and, Trevor should. Trevor and Casey have been putting that list together because Trevor is the one that's meeting with them on the 23rd for us as a select board. Cause we can't, they didn't want a public meeting so we couldn't all go and, right. until, unless it was posted. So that's why only Trevor's going. But um, I felt confident that we had, I mean, we've been working on that list for almost a month. So um, I think Trevor and Casey have that list pretty complete. So that should be easy to forward as agenda items. Okay, so I'm going to forward this to Casey. I thought I had included her on it, but I sent you the email because, I I email because and I was going to just uh, what I'll do, unless you want to do it, is we'll just call Casey tomorrow and say get that list to, um, you know, I would put it to give it out to everybody and his brother just so that it's out there and they can't just say get your email, Tim. Just sent it to you. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry to I'm sorry, but as the note taker, what meeting is this? I'm saying need to get the list of items as agenda items for Trevor's meeting it's with for, um Mass DOT, Trevor representing us as Deerfield, and John and Casey will be there and Kevin. And um and then Joe and Natalie as well. Joe and Natalie are coming because that encourages cooperation. Um and Excellent. and and there seems to have been you know, the last meeting we had was really productive. So, um, I'm, so is this meeting part of MMA, or is this? Separate? No, it's after MMA. This okay. is this is down at Region Two's headquarters in Northampton. Okay. And John, I didn't want to confuse it in the notes. No. Okay. The open culvert for the um, near Stillwater, uh, near Bittersweet, that's not on this list. Is that? That should have been added because we added it or I added it on um, on Wednesday's meeting. Case, um, uh, can I ask you to call Casey? Because you, you handle her very yeah. well. Uh, <laughs> I will call Casey. And it has to be there by Thursday. So check with her at noon if you talk to her at 9 a.m. to find out if she sent it. OK, I will. Thank you. And that's that's all for me. That will be my to-do list right now. I'm writing it down. So 
I yeah. sent it to Lili yeah. and I sent it to Denise as well. So that way you guys can take a peek at the list of what we're discussing with them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm gonna John, can you send it to me? I wouldn't do that. That's an open meeting law violation. What? Sending it to me? No, it's already in your email. Check it. <laughs> okay. I was like, what? <laughs> oh my God. All right. Okay. All right. I will make sure. I'm I'm writing my to-do list. I will forward it to Casey tomorrow morning and then I will you know follow up before um I'm like 11 just so we have a little squish good plan okay all right okay so I'll give my report you know before I do that the first thing I was talking to Casey about this and I was talking about how effective it is to meet on zoom and we've got till March 23rd and I just hope to God that they don't change it that we have to meet in person because I don't think we're going to be as effective if we have to have our meetings in person. So that's something else to, you know, possibly write a letter to Joe and Natalie and talk to them about really pushing to make sure that we can continue having hybrid meetings. Because if we have to go back to in person. I would suggest that we as a committee right now, I will make that motion that um, we write as a committee that we are in support of continued um, remote meetings what we can do is vote yes and then Casey will send a, a letter saying all our committees are in support of okay Zoom. I, I, and are you going to ask Casey to do that too <laughs> yeah but not not, not till next not tomorrow week. right 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 okay perfect okay. i'm going to actually put it on my in my book for next week okay so you made a motion do i hear a second second okay um all in favor? Um, what about discussion? Because I don't know if my committee members would want, they're a lot of them really like to meet in person. So I think I could speak for myself. This PCI, well, no, it's committee, this is PCI but, taking the vote. Okay. And the board and right, right, right. we'll take a vote or whatever. But yeah, um, we, I, I think what we need to do is just cumulatively, um, you know, have Casey be putting together a list of committees that want to say this and so that we can write a letter of support. Carolyn, it's it's it's, it's, to, have, it's to have the ability to have a hybrid meeting. You can do what you want. You can meet in person if you want. That's fine. But yeah. we need to have the ability to meet in high, you know, hybrid. Or, you know, sometimes or people, remote. Yeah. Well, or yeah, I mean remote. you still want to do the remote because you know well, yeah I mean remote is good. I mean sometimes Andrew's been across the country and Ali has I you know I mean Julie Chopin is just a little phone. Yeah. Well, whatever. Anyway, okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing is Lily and I had a really great meeting, a Zoom meeting with um, Christine Madori Madur from Complete Neighborhoods. And she also had the um, engineer, engineers, I don't know, the group that's going to be working with us. And let's see, it's from VHD. I don't know what that stands for. They're urban planners, they're planners. Yeah, and they've, they've got offices all over the country. At any rate, um, what we're going to be, this is the Complete Neighborhoods Grant, and there's we don't get the money, we don't do reporting, which is, it's like the perfect grant. And so what we're gonna do is they, I think they just have to, um, you know, finish up their contract. And I think we're gonna start off with community engagement as step number one for the campus vision. So we'll probably have two to three meetings where we'll be holding public meetings for community engagement about the campus and to let everyone know. I mean, you know, some people know, but I'm sure half the town doesn't know what's going on. Um, they also want to, they want to assess the existing conditions, identify constraints. And I'm not sure whether, you know, I think you said that earlier, Lily. We, um, you know, we let them know just about everything that we're that's going on so far ever you know things that are in process things that have been accomplished so they've got a pretty good idea of um you know where we are right now in the process with the campus so and they're going to prepare i think two to three concept scenarios to guide future growth on the campus and let's see Lily, could you want to add anything so one of the things that they are also um, going to give us is um, design 
concepts so that um, we, we had talked um, in some some place that I was with planning board, maybe we were talking about this new this new concept of um, ways of zoning that like Northampton is adopting where what it is, it's like character based zoning, as opposed to saying, uh, so it's trying to keep it sort of <clears throat> in character with the neighborhood. So they these folks are saying we can give you design concepts that you can use for your um, planning and going forward and stuff. So you have a cohesive look and feel for the town as well, which I thought was a really, really good benefit of them. The other thing is that they have a graphic artist who yes. was at the meeting. So I love the primacy that they gave that. They clearly, they're like, yeah, we will, you will get pictures so that people will understand the visions. Yeah. So, and they're gonna come and visit too. Yeah, that was the so, first thing. Yeah, they're gonna come out and do a site visit. So that'll be really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's that's going really well. And I think originally, I think Christine said, you know, there are six towns that, six different towns that are involved in this. And she put in, I mean, I, I don't think we had any say over how much money at first I thought we were going to be you know fighting over how much money everyone got but I think she said um up to 40,000 and then on the on the zoom she said oh you know maybe up to 50,000 so we're going to get a good amount of you know but also she that they're also doing separately up to 30,000 working on um keeping Elm Circle as affordable housing which is huge because if we lose that yeah. uh, we won't be eligible for state funding for senior housing i'll tell you that much but also um any 40b can come through here right. Never mind the whole thing about not having people who can afford to live here anymore which is yeah. at heart problem anyway yeah so that's a that's whole separate bucket that they did True, but that may change lately because when we were on the meeting last time, um, oh shoot, I forget her name from uh, FERCOG said they probably don't need the 30, just about 10, but FERCOG is doing that. So that's good. And then they're also doing Tritown too. I right. think, what did they put? Something like 40,000 to that. So into the, yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that because we haven't had another group meeting, but that was, um, that was good news. And then let's see, Casey and I just met with two women from Mass Development. They came out for a site visit once again, which was great. They were pretty excited. And that's for the community one stop. <clears throat> and I think one thing that they did say is, you know, what kind of relationship do you have with Greenfield Savings? And they, you know, I mean, we know that, you know, the Community Reinvestment Act, they've got to give so much. And so I asked Casey how much they had actually done. I think they'd done given up some money for uh, the Leary, Leary lot for the EV. They, they not, promised some, but they ha I don't think we've gotten any yet. Well, I think they were going to do like a thousand dollars a year for X yeah. amount of years. Right. But at any rate, so I, I think, and we talked about this before about community engagement. So I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to go and have a preliminary conversation. I forget her. It's Kim. I forget her last name, but she was. She's really, I mean, I don't know her well. I've met her. Um, she was a member of the Deerfield, South Deerfield Women's Club for a while. But what I'd like to do is to go and meet with her. I was hoping maybe, Tim, you could come with me. <laughs> we could go. I thought it would be good to have someone from the select board. Um, is this a bank person or is this a local? Bank person. Yeah, she's the manager. She's the manager of the bank. So sure. I just wanted to throw want that out there. Just let me know. Yeah, yeah, just to talk about that and to see, you know, what Greenfield Savings can do for us because they are they are an integral part of our community and they've got tons of money. So so we we can talk about that later. But um so that was a really good meeting. And we're going to be um uh, I think I said that at the beginning of the meeting, um, submitting an expression of interest. On a couple different projects, and that will be for the 1828 building, the 1821 building. So that's why Julie and Trevor, if I can 
you know, get some of that information by next week, that would be really helpful. What, you know, what's in process already. Uh, let's see, what's the other thing that I wrote down? Um, oh, yeah, just one thing about the MMA, which I didn't ask yesterday. Do you want me to bring some of those postcards that we have? Yeah, I okay. think that's an excellent idea. Okay. You want to hand them out to any of yeah. the, at least the state agency people right. okay. that we talk to. All right. Okay. And, so I mean, we were talking about going to see the economic development people and, um, Trevor and I had talked to the housing and development community yep. development people. That's a little bit different than the ones we were initially identified, but I, okay. I think we could talk to both groups. Okay. Um, All right. So I'll that. Booth. Some people are really enthusiastic and really good. And then some are, you know, you know, you're not going to get, get anywhere with them. So don't mm -hmm. wait for the postcard. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see who we hand out to anybody that looks like and make sure you get your card so that you can organize a follow-up. I will. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm not my first rodeo. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll go okay. like this and I'll say, if you're not going to help us out, I'm taking it back. Would that be okay? <laughs> Okay. If you right. never never hurts to ask for their card to contact one of their reps and work through their reps so you're not inundating them. Yeah. And then they're respectful of you in return because they know you're not going to pester them directly. Right. right. Yeah. But if you smell money, make sure you get a number. Oh yeah. Oh my God, Carolyn, you're terrible. I know. I like you. <laughs> Keep up the good work. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Okay. All right. Is there Anything else that was not anticipated? Nope. Oh, we should set a next meeting. I mean, we'll probably have stuff to report after MMA. There's there's so much going on here. So uh I just the is, and is an office soon. An off meeting um, for the select board is um, is Wednesday the first. Right. We could meet Wednesday the first. Yeah, we could do that. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a long meeting. I mean, this this was there was a lot here tonight. But we could just report what happened at the MMA and sure. um, update on the grants. Um, okay. any, do I do six thirty? Is that good? Yeah. February first at six thirty. Yeah, at six thirty, I'll send that out. Exactly when the library trustees are meeting. Oh, oh my God! Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, first Wednesday of every month. It's when we meet. <sighs> I'm out of town that day too. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. What, Julie? Julie's out. I'm out of town that day. Oh, you are. Okay. Well, let's see. So fifteenth is the next time that the select board folks are available we could we could do um thursday the second if we met at six o'clock then we could meet for an hour before the senior housing meeting yeah i can't do the second i'm a, i'm away oh okay yeah. uh well we're it in sounds like deja vu we had this discussion at six i know i know <laughs> sounds like a, a doodle poll is in order uh, uh no, 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 no. no. We'll no. decide tonight. What about Monday the 13th? How about a Monday night? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, February 13th at 6 30. February 13th. March. March. No, you're right. February. <laughs> March. All right. <laughs> you're, you're dreaming. <laughs> Let's not let's not race any faster than we already are. I already lose days. I swear to God. So. Was that at six thirty or six? Six six thirty. I'll be sending out. I'll be sending that out. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. Then then we'll definitely have updates. Yeah. So uh, we should be hearing from a lot. Actually, we should have some feedback from quite a few things. Yeah, that is the hope, including the geothermal maybe. Yeah. Mm, that might be a little premature for that. It's supposed to hear in March, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'm setting this meeting for March, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see in March, Emma. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if any of us show up. <laughs> oh my God. But Jim, you will be sending a doodle for the campus working group, right? 
that makes sense. We will respond. Jim. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, right. he nodded. Okay. All right. Um, do I, I hear move we adjourn? I select board want to adjourn. Adjourn first. Yeah. Do they go um, first or after us? Welcome to the select board adjourn. Second. Okay. CCI. I. I. I second. I. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all. Thanks, Denise. See you guys. Thank you, Thank you Denise. Thanks,